be anything too serious, it, nothing you can't handle. You've been through a lot, David. Um, a frightening sermon. I remember when I was a kid, I would hear some frightening sermons. Uh, Darwin used to go to the, the old brush arbor and he'd have nightmares for a week afterwards. <laughs> I don't know if that's true. I, he may not have told me that either. I may have just... I may have just got mixed up. A frightening sermon. Toward the end of Paul's missionary journey, he was going, his plan was to return back to Jerusalem. That was God's plan, by the way. And listen to what he says to the Ephesian elders. He met them uh, close to the shore, and he talked to them in Acts 20, verse 22, is in particular that I want to look at, Acts chapter 20, verse 22 and 23. Uh, and now, behold, bound by the Spirit, I'm on my way to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit solemnly testifies to me in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions wait me. Uh, he knows God is sending him to Jerusalem, and then God is going to send him to Rome, and the Romans are going to pay for it. And he tells the elders he may never see their face again. And so they all cried and, and he left. Uh, God will send him to Rome using the Roman soldiers from uh, taking him from Jerusalem to uh, Caesarea. We'll look at here in just a second. That's where he winds up. The Jews formed a mob in Jerusalem and their plan was to kill Paul. Uh, for the preaching of Jesus Christ and a Roman centurion rescued him uh, from that mob and they plotted later to kill Paul. Uh, they had it all worked out and the uh, Roman soldiers are going to take care of that. The Romans took Paul to safety to Caesarea on the coast. Uh, he is, will remain there in custody of the Romans. Uh, the Jewish leaders will come and make their charges about what they see that Paul has done, and he'll, and then they will have, hear Paul's defense on all those charges. Felix was a Roman governor or proconsul, and uh, he was ready to hear Paul's defense. And Felix knew he was innocent. Felix was crooked, but he wanted to bribe Paul. Uh, he would have, in fact, he would have let Paul go. He would have released him if he would just pay the bribe. And later Paul will appear, appeal his case to Caesar. And so Paul, after his defense, and his defense is preaching Jesus Christ. That's, that's his defense. And he's preaching to Philip, uh, Felix, I'm sorry, the Roman governor, in Acts 24, verse 24 and 25. In particular, I want you to look at Acts 24, verse 24 and 25. We know this, all of us do, but it's good to be reminded. <clears throat> but some days later, Felix arrived with Drusilla, his wife, who was a Jewish, and sent for Paul and heard him speak. What did he speak about? About faith in Jesus, faith in Christ Jesus. But as he was discussing righteousness self-control, and a judgment to come, Felix became frightened. King James says terrified. The new King James says afraid. Uh, he got shook, in other words, uh, and said, go away for the present, and when I find time, I will summon for you. When I find time, he says, and I, apparently that time never came. I think it's interesting that Paul was to defend himself, but instead of defending his own personal self, he preached Jesus Christ to him. In fact, he preached sermons in many times, in many prisons while he was in prison, many sermons. Uh, Romans 1 and verse 16 and 17 says, Paul says, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and to the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. Paul never let the opportunity to slip by for him to preach, uh, even when he was in prison. Historians tell us about Felix as a Roman governor. He was corrupt. 
He was self-indulgent. He was dishonest. He was unjust. I'm thinking some more words. He was immoral. Uh, he took bribes, so he was crooked. And he kept back for himself funds that should have been sent to Rome. And shortly before Paul was released, or for, before Paul was going to, to Rome, we're told in Acts 24 and verse 27, after two years had passed, Felix was succeeded by Portius Festus, and wishing to do the Jews a favor, Felix left Paul in prison that, that length of time, two years for doing nothing but preaching Jesus Christ. Felix was recalled. He was arrested on corruption. He appeared before Caesar, and he was found guilty, and he banished him into exile, and he died two years later. So that convenient time, far as we know, never came. Uh, this man, the character of this man that Paul preached to, if you notice all the things that Paul preached to him about there and, and uh, about uh, self-control, all those other things that he preached to him were things that he needed. If you, if you notice, Felix, in that lifestyle he lived, and he lived as that's exactly what Paul preached to him about. No wonder he was terrified at Paul's preaching. So let's take a quick look and see why this was so. Let's look at some of the things. So first thing that we see is Paul reasoned of righteousness. And uh, if there was ever an unrighteous person, you'd be hard to find a, more, a person more unrighteous than, than Felix. He was guilty of all the things we saw earlier. He, uh, this was his way of life. He lived his life this way. And he heard Paul speak of righteousness, and it caused him, maybe it caused him to, to look at himself and, and, and look at his lifestyle, look at himself, and, and may, maybe the reason he was terrified. <laughs> One reason, we can see on the day of Pentecost when people heard the gospel, we know what happened to them. Uh, in Acts chapter 2, verse 36 and 37, Therefore all the house of Israel know for certain that God who made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. And so the people heard this, and they were pierced to the heart, and they said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brethren, what shall we do? They were pierced to the heart. That's what the gospel is designed to do, and apparently that's exactly what happened to Felix. It, it went right straight to his heart. It pierced his heart or to convict him of the world of, uh, of sin. In John chapter 16 and verse 8 tells us, and he, when he comes, will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and the judgment. So Paul's preaching is doing just that to Felix and to all of us today when we, when we study. One purpose of the gospel is to make people righteous. Uh, made righteous by the blood of Christ. In Titus chapter 2, verse 11 through 13 says, For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men, instructing us to deny ungodliness, worldly desires, to live sensibly, righteously, and godly in this present age, looking for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Christ Jesus. So to... To be righteous, there's two things that are necessary. You have to hear and obey the gospel, and then you have to live faithful. And Romans 1 and verse 17 says, For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, that is, as it is written, the righteous man shall live by faith. And 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21 says, He made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that we might become righteousness of God in Him. This required every person, this is required of, of every person to be saved if, you, if we want a home in heaven. And so Felix heard every bit of what Paul was saying, and God's Word cut him right in the heart, and he knew he was guilty. Uh, so Paul preached next to him about self-control. Felix was immoral, he was a glutton, he was a drunkard, he needed a sermon on self-control, and that's exactly what he got from, from Paul. We all need this sermon too. As Christians, we're pilgrims, we're just passing through this world, and this life is not our permanent home. And 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 through 11 tells us, but you're a chosen race, a royal priesthood 
a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. For you were once not a people, but now you are the people of God. You had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Beloved, he said, I urge you as aliens and strangers or pilgrims passing through to abstain from fleshly lusts which wage war against your soul. We face the same temptations Felix did in this world. Felix needed this lesson from Paul so uh, he could... He could not do as he pleased, you know. He can listen to that and think that he could live however he wanted to live or do as he pleased without regard to God and God's will. We too have to learn to discipline ourselves. Teaching us this comes from the same gospel that Paul preached to Felix. Developing self-control he's trying to talk to Felix about. Well, it also pertains to us. Developing self-control is achieved through the help of Almighty God. It takes discipline to develop self-control. Paul teaches this through athletics, believe it or not. He talks to us about that, about developing self-control. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, beginning at verse 24, he tells us, We do not know, or, or do you not know, that those who run the race in a race all run? but only one receives the prize run in a such a way that you might win. Everyone who competes in the games exercises self-control in all things. Why then, do, why then do it to receive a perishable wreath when we an imperishable one? Therefore I run in such a way as, as not without aim. I box in such a way as not beating the air, he says. And it's verse 27, but I discipline my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified. This is an example, an excellent example that Paul gives us for a Christian in, a, in the race of life. We're in a race for the crown. We're in a race for a uh, unperishable crown, one that will inherit heaven. So there's both positive and negative and that's vital for self-control. The positive is we have to have courage. We have to have courage to stand and strong in our faith. And the Lord will help us if we will call on Him. In 1 Corinthians 16 and verse 13, He says, Be on alert. Stand firm in the faith. Act like men. He says, Be strong. So we have, must have strength of will to flee evil. In 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20, he goes on to say, or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own, for you have been bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body. So the negative is the devil's a constant enemy. He's always on alert. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 and 9, he says, Be a sober spirit, be on alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He wants us. He's already got the world. He wants us as Christians. James chapter 4, verse 7 and 8, he says, Submit therefore to God. Resist the devil, he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he'll draw near to you. All of us have to be strong in our faith to develop self-control in our lives. Paul preached to Felix, uh, Felix about the judgment to come. And this really shook him up. I know it did. Uh, for such a man as Felix in the life that he lived, he must have, it must have been a, a special terror for him. The authority of Caesar, you know, that, that was enough to terrify lawbreakers. Well, we're talking about Almighty God and a far higher power than Caesar ever thought about. And what the apostle preached on the jud judgment, Felix may have thought, uh, what is he going to say? If I was Felix, I'd be going, what could I say? What could I say to God before his throne, before the judgment? How could I justify anything? There are many who scoff today at the judgment to come. But it's coming. It doesn't change a thing. Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 14, For God will bring every act into judgment, everything that is, which is hidden, whether it is good or evil. 
Hebrews 9 and verse 27 tells us, Inasmuch as it is appointed for men to die once, after this, the judgment. Paul wrote to the church of Corinth in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 10. He tells the church there in Corinth, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may be recompensed for his deeds in the body, according to what he has done, good or bad. So for a faithful Christian, we don't have anything to fear. We have nothing to fear. But those that uh, have not obeyed the gospel or those who scoff at the gospel or those that reject God and reject His call, it's, it'll be a terrifying time. When Jesus Christ describes that torment of the unrighteous and the punishment, He talks and uses an example. He uses fire. Matthew 25, beginning at verse 41 and, and then verse 46. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, accursed ones, the eternal fire, which has been prepared for the devil and his angels. And then in verse 46, he says, These will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. You see, we're made righteous by Jesus' blood, by our obedience to the gospel and living faithful to him. God clearly teaches this. And he warns us of an eternal hell. And it's no wonder Felix is terrified by, the, by him talking about the judgment. From hearing the words of the Apostle Paul, it terrified him. Those ungodly and those unprepared to meet God, they'd be just like Felix at, at the thought of this pros, pros, prospect. How can anyone have peace in their heart if they're not a Christian? You ever thought about that? How could you ever have peace? But see, we justify ourselves in our own minds. And that Felix, I guess, did later. He was terrified at then. The result of Paul's terrifying sermon. What's the result? Felix replied the same way that there are so many today that reply. Acts 24 and verse 25. But as he, Paul, was discussing righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come, these are the things that Felix needed, and Paul knew it. And Felix became frightened and said, Go away for the present. When I find time, I will summon for you. When Paul spoke about, to him about the truth of God's words, a decision was called for by him and called for by us today. Felix failed to act. Go away for now and I'll call you back when I have a convenient time. But nothing in the Bible or history ever indicates that Felix responded to that gospel. So he will have to face the judgment unprepared. He will face a living nightmare for an eternity in a lake of fire and brimstone. Felix made a fatal mistake and is still being made by so many today. Obeying Jesus Christ and following him is not a matter of convenience like Felix thought. It's a matter of conviction and action. Listen to the words of the Lord, Matthew 16 and verse 21. If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Matthew 7, verse 13 and 14. He tells us, enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is broad that leads to destruction. And many therein will go that way <clears throat> or through it. For the gate is small and the way is narrow that leads to life, and there are few that find it. That's scary, isn't it? Few that find it. It's not a matter of convenience. If you hear the gospel, you obey the gospel today. You made the greatest decision in your life, and you need to make it right away in no convenient time. And if you're talking about a matter of convenience, it, it's never a matter of convenience for us to obey. The Lord may return at an inconvenient time. And so we only know, when, we don't know when, only God does when he's coming back. Matthew 24, and verse 42, Jesus says, Therefore be on alert, for you do not know which day the Lord is coming. So as a Christian, we're to be ready. But it will cost dearly for those who refuse. They, those that thought they would wait for a convenient time, and that convenient time just, just never came. And then it's too late. Living our life as a Christian according to his will is being ready, is being ready for the judgment. But like Felix, the right time never came for him and there are so many people going to follow in the same path today. 
Today, if we're waiting for a convenient time, it will not come for you and I. In 2 Corinthians 6 and verse 2, the last sentence of that verse, Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Now is the time to obey the gospel of Christ. Now is the time to live faithful to Him. So we don't want to ever make the mistake that Felix made, that he did. Listen, he listened to God and, and, and refused to do that. He waited for a convenient time. So the question for us as, as Christians, have you been faithful in your life? Have you been faithful to God? If not, you need to repent and make it right with God. And if we can help in any way, won't you come while we stand and sing?